Hi folks, I'm back. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, um, should I should I like do a little recap here? I, I don't know if I really need to. So we found out there was a murder. Both guys were locked inside of the room. The the guy who was murdered and presumably the guy that they think did it. But we were able to establish the possibility that there might have been a third person who locked the key inside of the room and stuck it in through the air vent. And that third person was like in a in the Tenmataro costume or whatever, which is like this big bird. So, and anyway, at the last second, the guy, the defendant, decided to come up and say, Kaka, Kaka! I wasn't just dressed in the costume, I really am the bird! And I don't know where, how that's gonna help us at all, because now everything's just even crazier than it was before. But let's find out. Having a yokai testify in court is unprecedented, to say the least. I am Tenmataro, the yokai you seek. How can such a straight-laced man like Mr. Tenma suddenly become a demon? Yeah, it's strange. Even worse, Prosecutor Blackwill's playing along. Ugh, I can't even think straight anymore. I need to go out for a run. See you in a bit. Okay. Wait, what about the... Investigation. <laughs> Guess, uh, well? Uh-oh. Yup. Back from work? No. Back from cosplaying, probably. Yup, I really nailed this new magic trick I've been working on. I also heard about these tricks that were conjured up in court earlier today. You know, the demon out of nowhere trick and Polly's tightrope style defense trick. I was seriously considering a disappearing act of my own after all that craziness. As would anyone, I'm sure. Anyway, our next trick is to find a suspect other than the mayor. I know the killer must have used the air duct in their escape. And whoever did that was the Ten Mataro that Mr. Filch and Jinxie saw. Right. Maybe there's some evidence in the air duct. I mean, could we have done that before? <laughs> well, we couldn't have done it before because then there wouldn't be a, a day two investigation, would there? Also, nice earring. Hey, before you go, let me make the evidence you no longer need disappear. Um. Whoa, wait, 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 no, 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 not the flower! I liked the flower! Not the flower! Ugh. Unnecessary evidence has disappeared into Trucy's magic panties. Well, that's too much information, but hey. I wonder where all that stuff goes. Okay, let's get over the scene of the crime. Vamanos, Apollo, vamanos! Weren't you gonna go for a run? Well, maybe this will be the run. She'll just get there 15 minutes earlier. Oh, right back in the manor again. So who's gonna be here? Detective Fulbright! Mind if we search the air duct? Oh no, he's dejected after what happened. Well, since you really are on the side of justice, I suppose I can let you. Plus, my own sense of justice has been called into doubt, so... Well, don't take it too hard, man. I wonder if he's been like this ever since the trial. <laughs> well, his sense of justice has been beaten to a pulp. It'll probably take a couple of glasses of orange juice with pulp to get it back. So we're feeling bad for him, but we have work to do. So, no who cares? Let's go get the evidence we need. The air duct is the key. <laughs> in more ways than one. We know the Tenmataro impersonator used it to make an escape. But, did we really establish that? I mean, I know we said he threw the key in through the air duct from the outside, and that's how the key got locked inside the room with the two guys that we found originally when we came in there. After murdering the alderman, the killer left the fox chamber through the hallway door. Okay, this is what he did. Then after locking the door from the outside, the killer entered the air duct in the hallway, <laughs> dropped off the key, mm-hmm, yep. then went back through the duct and fled the manor, like so. That's how the illusion of no one entering or leaving the locked room was created. If the killer passed through the air duct, maybe we'll find some evidence there. Yeah, maybe some black feathers or something like that. Something tells me we're gonna find something really crazy up here. Like a, another dead body or something. Don't worry, I brought a stepladder. <laughs> you brought a stepladder. How nice of her to volunteer me for the job. Well, yeah, I would do it. I want to see what's up there, man. What's well, pitch black in here? Now I know what a TV dinner feels like. Oh, nice sound effects. Mm. 
Damn! Hope you brought an extra set of clothes. I don't get it. Why would there be so much dust if someone had just crawled through it? Maybe there was just that much of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pitch black and covered in soot. Yeah, dust. Lots of dust. So what'd you find? Well, you know, dust. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good lord. Do you think it'd be possible to crawl over that sort of dust without leaving a trail? I seriously doubt it. Wait, you're not suggesting... No one's gone through that duct lately? No one's gone through that duct lately! Dun 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 dun! Kinda looks that way. <laughs> and if it's true, Mayor Tenma's gonna be fingered as the killer. B but no! If we don't turn things around quickly... Oh, injustice we trust! He's back! Ha ha ha! Sorry, Mr. Justice. But it seems your justice was not the most just after all. It was my sense of justice that has prevailed. Hard. Well, at least somebody's happy. Detective Fall sure seems chipper all of a sudden. Oh, and I'm back to my old devastated self. Yep. Oh, come on! Where's that never-say-die spirit? Bring it on, Mr. Lawyer Man. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let me suffer in peace. Ha! <laughs> oh, justice prevails once more. It's not over yet. Besides, kicking someone when they're down is what bad guys do. Oh! Are you calling me a, a bad guy? Me, Bobby Fulbright, champion of justice? And how about some information on the investigation? We need some help here. Also, I need food. Information about the investigation? Fine. <laughs> Alright, but I won't have you calling me a bad guy ever again, understood? I guess not. We did it, Apollo. Uh, yeah, but how long can we keep this up? Well, I sure don't know. Alright, I guess it's talking time. Investigation. Can't believe Roscoe Blackwell would stoop that low. I mean, depending the blame on a yokai, he really wants a conviction at all costs. Uh. She could give a yokai a run for its money when she's mad. <laughs> yes, I'm frozen. Well, I have him writing a self-reflective essay as we speak. You what? teach him anything. Oh. Yeah, I'll probably just ride dote hard a thousand times. Wow. That whole yokai business is most likely a ploy to win a conviction. The truth is, Prosecutor Blackwell believes Jinxie Tenma planted that yokai stuff. Planted it in an effort to protect her father, the real killer. Yeah, right. I'd like to see him prove it. Well, calm down, Missy. He doesn't have any direct evidence. But we did find this. Of the staff. Oh. Yeah, I think it might be. Hmm. Miss Tenma no doubt tossed it over the cliff when she was done. Hey. Well, what about Prince? <clears throat> oh, my voice is a little bad from. I just came back from TRJ Coliseum. And there, needless to say, there was a lot of shouting. Man, you should have heard Tom Fox. Man, he was like, oh, foobar by the end of that, anyway. Nope, no prince. But if she was wearing a costume, there wouldn't be any anyway. Well, prince or no prince, it's not going to work in our favor. Sounds like the staff might have belonged to the mansion. So, like, didn't she say she saw him with the staff on the way down, though? Because we were trying to use that as the angle to say, oh, well, they must have heard it down there, too, the other two guys, but... Ah, I don't know. Oh, Where in the mansion did Tenmataro get it from? Oh. Okay, well, I was thinking the staff was put there afterwards. I mean, he, well, he did leave, right? Well, is that what they're saying? Well, I think, it, uh, well, what I think is that he never did leave. Like, he went into the, well, we know already who it is. You know, I kind of wish they didn't show that at the beginning, but okay. Because now we know, if he didn't leave, he just went in there with the other guy, probably paid him off not to say anything. And then, like, paid him to get rid of the staff by throwing it out the window or something. I don't know, the Amazing Nine Tails, anyway. Did Prosecutor Blackwell figure out that the victim was the Amazing Nine Tails? He did indeed. He's a sharp one, alright. 
He figured it out while investigating the municipal merger and the victim's past. This guy again. The amazing Nine Tails sparked the yokai craze and worked against the merger. And Mayor Damien Tenma is the corrupt politician who murdered that great hero. Man, the picture looks so different when you actually know who it is. Like, it's different when you first see the character for the first time, you don't recognize them, you haven't been talking to them. And then you go back and see that picture again, and it's like seeing something you haven't seen before. The amazing Nine Tails fans are so angry, they even tried to storm the detention center. Oh, boy. I don't blame them. I mean, their favorite masked wrestling hero was murdered. They must have been shocked when they found out what happened. Speaking of which, isn't Jinxie also a fan of the Amazing Nine Tails? I mean... Or is his mask is more precious than his own life? He never unmasked himself in front of others. But there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's masks. To have your mask torn off is the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. That's why their masks are more important to them than life itself. Yeah, I do remember that. She spoke with a passion that only a fan could appreciate. We ought to become fans ourselves and go protest in front of the prison. <laughs> what? No! Did you forget that Mayor Tenma is not only Jinxie's father, but our client? Oh, yeah. You be careful now. You're defending the most hated mayor in history. I just hope you don't find yourself on the wrong end of a figure four leg lock. Oh, what? Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, pfft. Are there any other new developments we should know? Is there anything else you'd like not to tell me, Miss O'Neill? Ooh, now that you mention it. Our suspect is suffering partial memory loss, but he did manage to remember something. He did? What'd he say? He said he didn't want to speak with us. His exact words were, I am under no obligation to speak with you mortals. And other things of that nature. Hmm. <laughs> wonder what Mayor Tenma remembered. <laughs> what if he remembers that he did it? Too bad you can't go ask him now, because Prosecutor Blackwheel's busy questioning him. Oh. Love to be a fly on the wall in that room right now. I know! Wind your way down to the playground with the rest of the kids. <laughs> oh, good lord. What now, Apollo? How about regrouping back at the agency? Good idea. We might get some words of wisdom out of Mr. Wright while we're there. I wouldn't mind talking to Mr. Wright as well. Uh, we could try presenting stuff, but we just threw out a bunch of evidence, so I don't know how useful this would be. How much do we have left here? We still have three pages worth. What do you say about these village superstitions? Oh, no, I guess not. Okay. Well, I definitely think they want us to head back, so um, that's what I'm going to do then. Back to the agency. Alright, let's see what we got. So maybe I'll go read over some past cases. And I'll go do some research on exorcisms. <laughs> hey, what's with you guys? You seem bummed out. How should I put this? It's like we're at the edge of a cliff and the only way is down. In other words, business as usual, right? Yeah, pretty much. Set up my toilet! Set up my toilet! It's pissing all the time, so I gotta set up my toilet. Oh, we're bound and gagged, too. Don't forget blindfolded with our ears plugged up. And nose clothes pinned as well. Ooh, and monsters at every turn, huh? Sounds rough. Hey, Apollo. Oh, and Athena's here, too. What is it, Edgeworth? I know, this is I am killing that one. Like, not, not in a good way, either. How goes the investigation, Apollo, Athena? How goes your walking around in business attire? I think it's safe to say things have gotten hairier than before. Oh, well, really, what happened? Did you gross some? I mean, ugh. I don't know, man. Oh, oh, I love that. I love that I'm talking to you right now. Our defense. What are we gonna do, man? You're the master here. I was watching the two of you this morning from the gallery. That was one tough day in court, to say the least. Ugh. I know, I've never had to defend a yokai before. That business about the locked room was another major hurdle. Yeah, and on top of that, Jinxie was accused of being an accomplice. But at least you figured out how someone could have escaped the Forbidden Chamber. Yeah, well, we just found out that our reasoning might be a tad flawed. Oh, really? Well, that's bad news. <laughs> how are we going to get out of this one? Uh, very carefully, first of all. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Yay, Mia. 
force a smile? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my mentor taught me that back when I was still learning the trade. She also taught me to return to the basics whenever I got stuck. Return to the basics? That's right. Always believe in your client, no matter what happens. That is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. The basics. Always believe in your client, huh? Um, <laughs> which client are we talking about here? You know, him or the bird? So, Mr. Wright, how long have you known Athena? I met her during a trip to Europe. Huh? You were in Europe? Was it... Why haven't I heard about this before? Yeah, people travel, Apollo. It's a, it's a thing that they do. I went there a few times to study the various legal systems over there. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I thought you worked as a pianist after you quit practicing law. Uh-oh. I did. But an old friend of mine needed help with some legal work from time to time, so... Oh, <laughs> an old friend. Who could you be talking about? Oh, I guess you were never very far from the courtroom then. It was like fate brought us together. It's thanks to Mr. Wright that I became a lawyer at all. Oh, huh. I knew she was lawyer material from the moment I met her. And I have high hopes for her ability to analyze people's emotions. Oh, it's not special. I mean, everybody should be able to do that. Maybe I've underestimated that analytical... ...so, man. I did pretty good reading it the first several times, that time it got me. It's just I thought that if my special ability could help defend innocent people, then I had to do everything in my power to bring it to the courtroom. That's when I really started hitting the books hard. Yeah, you hit those books. I'm still amazed she actually became a lawyer. I mean, look how dumb she is, you know? So nobody... No, I'm just kidding. At the tender 18 of, at the tender 18 of age, no less. Wow, that's almost superhuman. Or personal. Like she's trying to help somebody she knows. Ah, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. A little piece of the puzzle there. All right, I'm totally pumped up after talking to you, Mr. Wright. It's like you said, the worst of times. When lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. And don't forget to return to the basics whenever you get stuck. Keep believing in my client. Right! Uh, Mr. Wright? Yes? <laughs> I'm... I'm going to visit our client again. That's the spirit! Go see him and talk to him and just get... Get your hopes dashed against the rocks all over again. Oh boy, well here we are. See, done talking to the prosecutor yet? I wonder. Good God! Oh God! Cocky call! So my minions have returned. That's not a voice. Well, that is though. Apollo, he still he still thinks he's a yoke guy. I wonder if we'll ever be able to talk to Mayor Tenma again. <laughs> Silence, peddler of the legal, legal trade! Free me from these imprisoning walls with great haste. Wants to just go through the air vent and get yourself out. Wow, he's sounding more and more like a real demon with every sentence. I'm starting to wonder if we should even be helping him with his freedom. Win his freedom, that is. Still, we can't let Mayor Tenma stay possessed, you know what I mean? If you can clear me of these charges, I shall help in whatever manner I may. Now ask of me what you will! I suppose it's worth a shot. I mean... <laughs> well, first of all... Yeah, feathers and tracks, let's do that. Were those feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime really your doing? Indeed, the remnants of Tenmataro, king of the underworld they be. The day when I once again dominate the mortal world is at hand. k k Ugh, sorry, Burp. Um, <laughs> the prosecution claims the feathers and tracks were planted by Jinxie. What's this? Uh-oh. I must breach these walls and go defend my little Jinxie at once! Huh? Mirror Tenma, is that you? Oh, did we get to him? Well, now. Damien appears to still reside within this body. But I should have expected as much from a descendant of mine. Be silent now, Damien! Guess a little thing like demonic possession won't stop a father's love for his daughter. Jeez, well. You didn't kill Alderman Kubi, did you? I have killed no one! The remnants of my presence have been misconstrued! The murderer is not I. For if I had slain that mortal... Raging Hellfire would have consumed him. Oh, and something about Ash. So, so 
So you're saying there must have been somebody else there. Come to think of it, the mayor had mentioned that he'd been clubbed with this statue. You better ask about this, too. Okay, right on it. Detective Fulbright mentioned that you might have something new to tell me. I just said detective there instead of detective. Indeed I have. I regurgitated this key but a short while ago. Excuse me? From what orifice did you do that? Behold, the key to the Forbidden Chamber! I didn't expect it to look like that. Is regurgitation one of your demonic powers too? <laughs> and how do you get around the body part of that? I do not waste my powers on such parlor tricks. Take the key from the killer, did Damien, whereupon he swallowed it. He sought to bar the killer entry to the Forbidden Chamber. So he wanted to keep it shut tight? Huh. But no fingerprints shall you find upon that key? How do you know that? Wait, is that another one of your demonic powers then? <laughs> would you get off of that, my man? Foolish mortal! You would have me, Tenmataro, act as some asinine alchemist. I protest the jailer and my will was done. Quite eagerly, I might add. Kick kick caw Oh my god. Always not to serve your malevolence. <laughs> wow. I guess I'm not the only one he scares the living daylights out of. Can we ask how you use this key? <clears throat> there it goes. We can find a keyhole anywhere in or around the door. Curse that infernal door! But if I had known its manner of opening long, long ago when I made my return, all you had to do was push it the whole time. Maybe Jinxie knows something about how the whole thing works. Okay, a key that the mayor took from the killer and swallowed. No fingerprints could be lifted from it. I could try presenting stuff, but I don't know if there's a point. It was kind of edging me towards... towards doing something else. I was hoping you take a look at this. An offering to me, quite admirable. But the best thing you could offer me is to win me my freedom, c c caw Right, right. I'll do my best. Uh, Okie dokie, then. You don't know anything about the village superstitions, do you? No? Okay. Alright, just checking stuff here. Do you remember anything about this? What might I ask is that? Uh, it's the thing that bonked you on the head and probably messed you up so bad. <laughs> This statue was found at the scene. Someone hit Mayor Tenma over the head with it. It had been wrapped in a large cloth before the Alderman's murder. Let me see whether Damien knows about such a thing. I'll just call him up on my cell phone here. Something wrapped in just such a cloth, does he recall? A secret gift from Alderman Cubie, it would seem. He, however, had not a chance to see it till now, for the cloth did conceal it. Maybe the cloth fell off or was removed after the Mayor was struck? Well, that Damien does not know. A secret gift. Huh. Maybe. Blackmail letter too, huh? Let's see what he says when I show it to him. Right there. Why this... This is that accursed blackmail letter that was sent to Damien! Apparently somebody slipped it into the alderman's pocket. We believe someone, probably the killer, stole it from Mayor Tenma's briefcase. You don't happen to know anything about that, would you? c c -caw! You have questions, do you? Very well, ask away, mortal. Ew. <laughs> I don't even know where I would start here. Who placed this in the alderman's pocket? Mm, very few were they who knew the letter was in Damien's briefcase. So whoever knew about the blackmail letter being in the mayor's briefcase is a potential suspect in its theft and placement in the Alderman's pocket. Oh, no. Mr. Mayor, or, I mean, I mean Mr. Taro, Taro, did you just remember something? Indeed I did. There was but one other who knew of that letter. Damien's aide, Florent LaBelle. Here we go. Here we go. The sights are set now. We are going to get that, dude. Full knowledge of that briefcase's contents did that aid possess? Then he may be the blackmailer and the murderer we're looking for. That is preposterous! He's a most trusted advisor. He would never betray Damien. Oh, that's Damien talking right there. Huh. Seems like Mayor Tenma is a bit too trusting of those around him. Still, this is huge. Now we know who might have slipped that, bla that blackmail letter in the alderman's pocket. 
Look out, Florent LaBelle, here comes justice. You better believe it. Let's go find that asshole and rake him over the coals. So make sure we take his shoes off first. Thanks for the help, you've just given us a major lead. Damn straight you did. Okay. Hmm, there's something that still bothers me. If Mr. LaBelle is the killer, what could have motivated him to open the Forbidden Chamber? We should probably search it for clues. Only one problem. How do you open a locked door that doesn't have a keyhole? Let's go talk to Jinxie. Maybe she can help. Just to figure out how the heck he got in there. I mean, was there even anything in there? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> the Okai Lane? I guess we're going? Oh, my finger's trying to cramp up on me here. Good lord, man. Hey, isn't that... Oh, you okay? You dare imprison me? Jinxie! <laughs> I can't say Jinxie without thinking of the cat and meet the parents, you know? She's acting really strange. <laughs> you don't say. Oh, she's gonna snap out of it and put one of them things on me. That lonesome no good nine tails. He shall know the terror that is mine in despair. Grr, grr. You shall pay. Oh, you shall pay dearly. All of you. Jinxie, are you alright? Oh, there it is. I knew it. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Oh, is that you, Mr. Demon Lawyer? Morning, Jinxie. It is morning, right? Morning? Isn't it already past noon? What am I doing here? Last I remember, I lay down to take a nap back at the manor. Oh, no! It must have been the Makura... Oh, God. Uh, the Makura Gaishi. Makura Gaishi? I don't have any idea. Makura Gaishi. Ever wake after a restless... Um, ever wake after a restless night's sleep to find your pillow in an unusual place? Or that you've been sleeping on the floor or in the hallway? Well, it's that yokai's fault. The Makura Gaishi preys on people while they're asleep. Sounds like you just need to be tucked in really tight. Or maybe a snug sleeping bag. Hmm. <laughs> This is not what she wants to hear, though. Ugh. Jinxie, how... Or, or is it, though? I don't know. I mean, that doesn't seem like she was putting on an act there. Something was going on. Jinxie, how come you don't have any charms on your forehead? I don't... Oh, they must have fallen off. Yeah, sure enough. Without them, evil things can creep into me. Ugh. <laughs> I think we had more than an adequate demonstration of that just now. I better reapply them. Directly to the forehead. Oh, there you go. Jinxie, there's something we wanted to ask you. Oh, there was something I wanted to tell you, too. I... I remember something else. You did? What was it? <laughs> it's gonna be really important. You know how we said before something... I remember saying before something about, oh, you're gonna remember this later. Jinxie, can you tell us what you remembered? Well, after the trial, I remembered lots of stuff. But there was one thing I thought was really weird. I'm almost afraid to ask, but here goes. Really? What? Um, it's about the yokai feathers and tracks. They weren't there when I first opened the door. Wait, what? Okay. Are you sure? Oh, my memory's crystal clear now. So you're saying they were left at the crime scene after you found it. So maybe the killer doesn't even know that she saw the crime scene? Oh, God. Because if the killer knew that someone else had seen the crime scene, then they wouldn't be able to do that stuff because they know the other person would come back and say, Oh, well, that wasn't there before. This could spell major trouble, Apollo. Why? Because Jinxie's already accused of leaving the feathers and tracks at the scene. If they weren't there when she discovered the crime scene, they will totally fuel the claim that she fabricated the evidence later on. Ah! Jinxie's fuzzy memory of the whole incident is really working against us. The prosecution will probably say she doesn't remember planting the evidence. Good luck rebutting that! <laughs> oh man, this is not good. I sure hope she didn't plant the evidence while she was sleepwalking or something. Oh, jeez. But is that for real though? Like, did somebody actually make her do that? Like, with hypnosis or something? Because that's like the closest thing to... To, like, science we got here. <laughs> Jinxie, you wouldn't happen to know how to open the Forbidden Chamber, would you? 
That door doesn't even have a keyhole. Well, it's supposed to have a secret mechanism. They say you have to figure it out before the keyhole will appear. Secret mechanism? Really? A puzzle? Uh-huh, it's hidden in the fox chamber. But only Alderman QB knew what it was, and how it worked. The Alderman of Nine Tails Vale sure loved his secrets. Again, my thoughts go to those three friends. Surely that has to come up eventually. Like, maybe she knows too, and she's just not saying. Apollo, let's go see if we can find that secret mechanism. Whoa, it's... <laughs> I said, whoa, hold on there, honey. I don't think I'm ready for that kind of a commitment. Jinxie, is there one key to the Forbidden Chamber? Only one? Uh-huh. Even the Manor's Master Key won't open it. That's because it's a very special room. That must never be opened. Guess that means nobody entered the Forbidden Chamber after the murder. After all, we know Mayor Tenma took the key from the killer and swallowed it, so... Well, yeah, I guess. So the mayor's efforts to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber were not in vain. Ugh. Well, alright. The key that the mayor took from the killer and swallowed, there's only one of its kind. She tried presenting the key, she just gave it to us, though. What's this? That's super wake up. Wow. Huh. Are you okay that inhabits objects to have them been used? Oh. Interesting. The Red Demon and a Suko Mogami. What a strange combination. Is everything to her some supernatural phenomenon? Fox and Demon statue. Oh, here we go. Alderman QB once made that statue. Er, no, no, no. Alderman QB made that statue. It's a token of goodwill. I think it was meant to be for Nine Tails Vale in Tenma Town. Token of goodwill? But the two yokai are fighting. <laughs> fighting? Oh, I see what you mean. The cup portion is missing. Wait, what? <laughs> oh. Huh. Sure doesn't look that way now, does it? Maybe it broke when it was used to hit Mayor Tenma on the head? I'm trying to think where we might have seen that. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Okay, so she's the only one who knows. Oh, huh. But we know that's not true, because eventually it's gonna turn up that somebody else knew. I think, maybe. I mean, I don't really know. So, is there anything else we should know about Jinxie? Please say no. <laughs> no, that's about it. Oh. Oh, no. Because he wouldn't happen to be... Injustice we trust! Oh my god. This guy has a way of showing up at the worst possible moments, and yet it's just... Crazy. Detective Fulbright, what are you doing here? I have business with this... Oh, <laughs> he's got one of them on his forehead. Oh, man. Oh, I gotta love that attention to detail. Prosecutor Blackwell has asked me to question her! Question me? Sorry, not interested. <laughs> I don't care, young lady. Are you here to ask that whole yokai affair? That's right. Specifically, we want to ask. Oh, but I can't tell you that now, can I? Jeez. Oh, come on, please. We're partners in justice, right? No, you're not. No, no, Prosecutor Blackwell specifically told me my questions were of the utmost justice. I will not fall for your lies in justice we trust. Oh, boy. With the Samurai sure has him on a short leash. Yeah, that he does. Well, at least he doesn't have him, like, with one of those things that Francisca put on Gumshoe. Good lord, can you imagine? Is there not a ghost? Maybe some sort of urban troll, then? Now come along, Miss Tenma, to the station with you! And away they go. He took her away. Missed my chance to see what she was lying about. Oh, no. Well, at least we found out there's a secret mechanism for opening the chamber. Let's go check it out. All right. I just hope they let us in now. Well, who's gonna stop us? Obama Snow? Oh, something here? Oh, 
Oh god, he was it, did you change your hair? He totally changed his hair color. Did he? I'm pretty sure it wasn't blue before. I'm so glad I had these carnations imported from England. Nothing but the finest will do. Perhaps I should place one aside for our dearly departed alderman. Hey, it's Mr. LaBelle! Apollo, let's ask him about you-know-what! Oh well, yeah, before we search the fox chamber, we should ask about the blackmail letter. What is your shoulders? Like, how? how is that possible? He must have, like, duck bills. I don't know. Why, if it isn't the mayor's little lawyers? What do you want with me? Um, there's something we wanted to ask. <laughs> what the heck?! You'll have to excuse me. Hello, the bell here. What the? Oh, jeez, they are phones. Oh my god. That is ridiculous. I'm surprised that doesn't actually exist now. These things on his shoulders are cell phones? Yes, about that, you must forgive me. This whole matter with Mayor Tenlo has become a complete nightmare. Where do you buy clothes like that? <laughs> no, it's just... Are well, you gonna answer the other one, or I guess the other one hung up? Oh, <laughs> surprise! This is my own special design. It's the ultimate in functional beauty. Functional beauty, are you sure about that? Looks a bit unwieldy to me. Oh, God! I know he covers his own nose when he sprays it. Like, he doesn't even like the smell of it. <laughs> You simply don't have an eye for beauty. It's too bad, man. If having an eye for beauty means looking like this guy, I'd rather be blind. <laughs> so what do you want with me? Well, I think that's when I talk. I still am pretty sure that's not his hair color from before. Alright, did you see him? Both Jinxie and Mr. Filch said they saw Ten Mataro, so what about you? You were there, right? Man, he doesn't... Ugh. Very well, I admit it. Admit what? That's right, I, Florent LaBelle, saw the Demon Ten Mataro. Hmm, so he did see something. Why'd you lie about not seeing him? Oh, I was simply trying to protect dear little Jinxie. Protect Jinxie? What do you mean? Why, don't tell me you haven't heard of that strange little habit of hers. Which one are we talking about? The one where she wanders around making mischief without knowing what she's doing. Rumor has it, she's possessed by Ten Mataro. That one's new to me. Oh! <laughs> well, there you have it. Anytime you hear about a Ten Mataro sighting, Little Jinxie should be your prime suspect. Tell us more about that rumor. I mean... I think he just wants us to think that. Like, he did something. Ugh. So what was that rumor about Jinxie? They say she's possessed. Not all the time, of course. It hits suddenly, then she starts wandering around doing strange things. Is that so? Although, come to think of it... Well, he must have took the thing off of her. You know, she totally believes that... Well, I'm still on the fence about how much she really believes in any of this, though. Ugh. Certainly would explain how she was acting earlier. Once, she even put on a Tenmataro costume and wandered. Because, like, even if she didn't believe in it, she would still have to pretend like the hypnotist, like the... I mean, I'm going on the assumption here that he's hypnotizing her. You know, because that's, like, the most reasonable explanation for it. Like, she would have to pretend that the hypnosis worked in that situation so as not to tip him off that she was really there for a different reason, like to spy or something. Or, I don't know. Once she even put on a Ten Mataro costume and wandered around the woods at night. She did? What? She did not.
Oh my god, this case is nuttier than squirrel turds. I wish I never asked. <laughs> oh, good lord. Does she remember anything while she's possessed? Unfortunately, no. She doesn't seem to remember a thing during these episodes. Memory loss during possession. Hmm. Come to think of it, her memory of the murder scene was quite fuzzy. I suppose that too was caused by her possession. Ah, then maybe... Oh, ho, ho, ho! So you do understand that was a really bad laugh there. Just... That whole yokai business was entirely of her own making. Now wait a minute. Although that yokai evidence wasn't there until after she discovered the crime scene. Does she leave those black feathers and strange tracks there herself? Apollo, let's ask Mayor Tenma about Jinxie's episodes next time we talk with him. Okay, maybe. Let's see what else we got in here. Let's grab the blackmail letter. It's highly likely it was Lavelle. Um, yeah, let's try it. I don't know if I want to give it away that I have this, though, is the thing. It's like that thing where you have to present the thing to Von Karma, even though you shouldn't. It's the blackmail letter, but it wasn't sent to Alderman QB. It was sent to Mayor Tenma. And... <laughs> Your point being... Someone took the letter from the Mayor's briefcase. And then placed it in the Alderman's pocket after he was murdered. Oh, you don't say. You wouldn't happen to be the one who made the switch, would you? No, that was Nintendo. After all, you're the only one who knew that the blackmail letter was in his briefcase. So naturally, you- Ah! Oh, shoot. Well, this guy is pretty good at, like, hiding. Like, usually they freak out, like, Wait a minute, how does he know that? But, like, this guy is just- It's freaking crazy. Perhaps that shot of cologne will make those scales fall from your eyes. Or my eyes fall from their sockets. So is it possible that you would like to frame me as a potential suspect? What would make you raise such an outrageous allegation in the first place? Oh, well. Oh! <laughs> My only crime is being born as beautiful as you see here. In other words, you have nothing. Now let me show you what to do with this garbage. Oh, shoot! Wait a minute! Oh, God. No, dude! Wait a minute! Shit, was I not supposed to do that? There's never been a time, like, in a case that I can remember where, where you just lose evidence by presenting it to somebody, though. Are we done with your silly questions now? Ooh, oh god. We don't have, like, another diverging case on our hands. I feel like I would have heard about that, though, if we did. And it is case two. Oh, so boy, here he goes again. Hello, the pal speaking. Really? You wish to carry my new product at your store? Oh, but I'm afraid it's my own private brand. It's not available to the public. What? Then I shouldn't advertise it on TV. But I don't understand. As the embodiment of beauty, it is my duty to announce my good looks to the world. <laughs> Stop the boss. I'm getting off. <laughs> <laughs> Even I thought that was funny. Everyone wants my exclusive. Uh, Je suis la belle. I don't know why I said hey before. It's too much Spanish, I guess. It's the crowns with my collection. You know, I don't even care. Now it's become so popular, it's been an absolute nightmare. You don't say. Well, they can't have it. It's just for me. All meant for you peasants. Peasants? Oh, there you go. I knew it. I knew it. Guess that means you can't sweat. I have seven colors in all. You can find out more in my commercials and magazine ads. Yeah, it's not available to the public. Brace the I can't help but wonder, maybe, then. Like, is there some poison in it or something? There must be a reason why it's not available to the public. That sounds like a setup for something... I'm trying to think of it, Mr. LaBelle. Your hair color's changed since the last we met. Oh, finally! Knew it wasn't my imagination. 
Oh my god, she's totally gonna use it, isn't she? <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? Oh, uh, Apollo? What should I do? Better take it before you get a face full of cologne. <laughs> Good point. Wow, thanks, Mr. LaBelle. And there you go. Hair color that washes out with water. It's Florin LaBelle's own brand and isn't available to the general public. Yeah. Okay, let's head over to the Fox Chamber. We still gotta find the secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Well, let's do that then.